What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another fantastic edition of Hopskeek News, your home for comic books, movies, TV shows. And today we have a really great episode for you because we are going to be highlighting a creator. You know, we love, love, love talking with creators, man, uh, especially ones that have some Kickstarter campaigns going on, because honestly, those are some of the best comic books out there. People getting their start in the comic book world, sharing the things that come straight from their brains to you guys that you might not be able to find. And that's what we're here for is help you find those. So today we're going to be talking with Eddie. He's going to be talking about his comic book, The End of Zed. And without further ado, let's let's bring in the crew. You know me, Lauren's there. Find us Hops Geek News, any podcasting platform, any social media platform these days. Uh, YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe right there. That's where we love to uh, go live, you know, just about once a week, typically where we just have our hangout show. Um, we're going to be doing something next week. I think we're going to be talking about uh, Penguin, or Batman Returns, excuse me, because Christmas season is already upon us. I'm going to be going to Massachusetts and uh, you'll hear about that trip. And oh man, gosh, Christmas time already. But let's not talk about the negative. Let's get into it. Lauren, how are you doing over there? I'm doing good. It's yeah, it's been an uneventful hump day. So doing good. Thank God. But yeah, I'm yes. excited to get the Christmas stuff going. We're going to do a variety live show. Some of our Patreons are going to contribute some videos. I'm really hoping we get to see some hidden talents from everybody. That's yes. always fun when you find out, you know, somebody you've known for years can do some random thing like play music on glasses full of water like who knows who knows what we're gonna get it's gonna be fun. <laughs> glasses on water and so, actually speaking of hidden talents that's a really good segue you got there because our guest today eddie he's got a really cool talent um one that i admire a lot we were talking before the show he's a graffiti artist originally so why don't you go ahead man introduce yourself we love to start off with the origin stories so talk sure. a little bit about how you kind of got into the the graffiti art style man sure sure thanks for having me first and foremost lauren oh, yeah. and, and matt i actually been listening to you guys all day today and an excellent show i really appreciate your time here um yes a graffiti artist uh different than a graffiti writer you know i think that's what we were talking about earlier matt graffiti writers are those that are on subways yes. and on the walls and everything and certainly you know, especially in, in the early 80s where my comic book takes place. They were, these were the pioneers of the art scene, the graffiti scene at that time. But growing up around that environment, I took that aesthetic and I made it mine, made it into my kind of art, which is uh, what I do as a graffiti artist. Uh, and I kind of purely, uh, I, I concentrate on vector art, which is digital art of it. And, and I love it. I love how, you know, you know, certainly there's a lot you can do with aerosols and, and everything. It's amazing. Matter of fact, I'm in awe knowing that you know, a nozzle of a, of a spray can is this tiny and yet the beautiful art that comes from, from it. But uh, certainly when you take it into the computer world, right, and, and vector art in particular, it takes on another level. So very grateful for that because, you know, these are things that I found in my life that filled holes. Uh, and graffiti was certainly one of them and, and, and turned it into something positive. And really the comic book is a lot about that, a lot about that, filling holes. Yeah, uh, man. So you talk about like your love of comic books. What was the comic books or storyline what was your first do you always we always remember first a lot of people say x-men sure. he was batman lauren has been in love with wolverine since of you know course. he graced our screen so that was her, her four-way so do you remember like what really brought you into this nerd sphere so to speak yes well first and foremost star wars besides comic books Everything my man star wars there we go good. yeah it grew up in that time so literally you know with my hand like this trying to move things it didn't my whole work. other wall here is lego star wars there you go <laughs> oh, back there, you know, and I had, so that star started, wars is amazing yes yeah it started the fandom you know but uh but no in terms of comics books uh, i had a best friend of mine we'd always go to the local comic shop and i would literally buy comic books just for the artwork uh matter of fact lauren the one behind you i actually owned it uh the, the exact oh, the chris uh, claremont uh, one yes exactly and so and i remember having these but never cracking them and opening them and reading them till one day uh, a buddy of mine says listen you got to read these rom ones you got like all the rom ones from rom one all the way you know at that time it was up to like 40. uh do you remember rom it was he was the space knight they called him he was like a robot oh and, uh, yeah, R -O -M, yeah. yeah R O M came around that time and so uh i started cracking open the books and boy was i addicted at that point it's like okay this is it rom the the writer's called bill matlow um and it's just an amazing story and from that point on yeah i, I was hooked I was just hooked. into it that's all it takes sometimes too man so everybody kind of is like hey you know where do we start with like reading a comic and mm -hmm. more often than not just pick up anyone and you one. can just find your way from there do mm -hmm. you think it's a lot harder now though for for what we'll call them kids to kind of pick up uh you know reading comics because as we're thinking of it the numbers are showing right that they're declining right so is it because of the kind of age that we live in that maybe comics aren't conducive for kids or 
I think it's a couple things. I think one, they're overstimulated with the iPads and and social media and YouTube and everything. Um, But I honestly think it would be easier nowadays because like you look at Uncanny X-Men and I mean, that went on for so many years and years and years. So that I felt like is more overwhelming to jump into where now it's like they're doing brand new stories regularly and starting at one with new series. So I personally think it would be easier as a kid. Of course, my kids don't read as many comics as I would like them to read, (laughs) but, um, (laughs) but I I really think it's more so them just being overstimulated and having too many options of other fun things to do. I've kind of like forced my kids into comic book, not like forced because they've always liked it, but I don't like them during the week. They don't get iPads. They don't get TVs. You know, it's schoolwork. You can go outside and play, or if you have nothing else going on, we have a comic room, like right when you walk in a big old of comic course. room. And so we're like, Hey, you know, they're like, can, we, can we grab one? I'm like, all you, man. And my son, who's, eight, well, it depends on which one. Well, all, right. Yeah. There's, there's certain ones where I'm like, I, uh, they can't you know, go and like, pick up the boys. So or, that yeah, I'm not right, gonna let right. them read. But my eight year old and his friends, they'll come over and they'll just pick through my comics and uh, they just sit there and read comic books sometimes. And I'm like, that's, that's what I'm hoping to get. Right. Is that's the memories is you just leafing through comic books and hopefully someday maybe they're talking about their, their first time, but you're right. There is kind of, I think we're seeing a golden age right now, honestly, mm-hmm. within the last few years. Um, I really think that things are turning around the comic space. Creators are kind of doing creator own books and yeah. everybody seems to be having a lot of fun right now. So yeah. I'm hoping, hoping we're back on the rise. That you translates know, like, to, yeah. Yeah. Like the eighties, yeah. nineties were like really cool glories. The early two thousands, there was kind of that lull. And I'm right. hoping now we're we're getting back up there. Well, I tell you, under, or they're creating their own mm-hmm. universes too, which I think is yeah, really yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you, you two should know this by now. You guys are the cool parents, man. Holy cow, cool parents <laughs> that let their kids read comic books and, like you said, twelve year old argument, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got to talk to them because I could remind them about my mother at twelve years old. That we connected on nothing other than music. I would say, other than oh music, yeah, we connected on nothing else. So. That's amazing. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for your opinion on that, because certainly, you know, as I think about how and, and again, to the story of, of filling holes in your life, you know, as a young kid, reading these stories really fill things that you may lack. Right. It gave me imagination and all that. So I'm, I'm curious in terms of of how if how the kids are getting them now. And you mentioned mm-hmm. some great things about uh, about comics itself. Uh, maybe one way that we can is if comic books were more interactive. Right. You mentioned iPads before. Right, Lauren, if you can have these comic mm-hmm. books kind of interact. And I remember Marvel was trying to do that couple of years ago and and i was hoping it would pick up but it didn't um at least i don't think it did so interactive comic books might be a good way to get get people right into the genre it's you're you're right like there there's been a lot of different like global comics is out there marvel had in dc they each had like their own centralized you can go it's been hard um i would love a subscription me i love like there's the physical copies i'm yeah. very old school in that way where i gotta have it staring at a screen i do that enough so it hurts my eyes but if the newer generations right that's the way they consume media then hopefully right. one of these you know databases full of comic books like takes off for these guys there and i think go. like some video games have even tried to do like cards and comic intertwine yeah. so yeah, someone's gonna crack the code one yeah. day yeah who knows what it is maybe what? they'll figure it out but my seven-year-old only wants to read the comics of the shows he likes. So he likes a Sonic movie so that he oh. wanted to get Sonic last time. Or like, you know, before he was big into My Little Pony. So like I had to read My Little Pony comics with him. Now he's right. being, you know, starting to be able to read on his own. Thank God. I couldn't read another My Little Pony <laughs> comic. They are more badass than you would think, though. I will give you that. They got okay, the wings cool. and the horns and all that. But but I think <laughs> connecting that visual media with the books is, is you know, I'll go into the comic book shop and I tell my kids, you know, you can get whatever you want. And my kid's named Logan. And of course, he never wants Wolverine. Oh, but, you know, he, he, my kids they, are named after the Green know. Arrow and they don't go after Green Arrow. So <laughs> and your kids know yeah. that, that they're named. after. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. Oh, yeah. How do they react to that? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Do they? They don't care. It means they don't nothing care. to okay. them right now. Who knows? <laughs> Mine cares sometimes like he has a wolverine costume and he'll tell people like my name's logan but you can call me wolverine but that his uh cool, man. Yeah. his favorite I, I would say marvel character is either peter parker or miles morales so it's spider-man okay yeah, yeah. again goes, I, i'll kids. say it again you guys are cool parents man <laughs> 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 name your kids out there you know you're cool parents you heard it here brielle i'm a We're cool, cool. Right, I'm, I'm clipping that right out Cool and I'm going to sit there in the pickup line. I'm going to play it out as my kids are walking in the car. I'm like, we're cool. Uh, but speaking of cool, though, man, you know, something about your comic book here, End of Z, as we dive into that, it started as a screenplay. Uh, yeah. Talk to us about End of Z. You know, it, it gave me like the robot 
it kind of gave me vibes. It reminded me of, you know, Hitchhiker's and Galaxy. Uh, yeah. I can always get this tongue twister. Gosh, right. Hitchhiker's Guide to I the Wally Galaxy. Wally. Yeah. Wally. Yeah. Um, so talk to us about End of Zed. Describe what it is, your pitch. And then, yeah, tell us how it started as a screenplay. And now we're getting to read it as a comic book. Sure, sure. Well, people are calling it uh, Wild Robot meets The Warriors. I don't know if you ever saw The Warriors. I haven't seen Wild Robot yet, but Warriors yes. come out to play. Yes. yes oh, exactly. yeah, man. Exactly. So that's the connection there, you know. Uh, and just like the Warriors, uh, the there's going to be four issues, and all four issues are going to take place in one night. So Ooh. it's going to be like a whole. I love it, like American Graffiti. I don't know. If, remember that? So that yeah, movie, yeah. American, oh, yeah. everything takes place in one night. That always fascinated me of how much of life can be solved within one night. You know. Oh. Uh, so End of Zed is a story about a robot who crash lands in the South Bronx, 1982, which was really a really crazy time for New York City. Uh, he's badly damaged and he has no memory. And he lands in probably one of the most tumultuous time in the city's history. And I, and I say that because it saw not only the beginnings of the crack epidemic, which oh, yeah. ended up starting around New York and then like basically contaminating the whole nation, uh, super negative to something super positive, which was the birth of hip hop, which ushered in new music. It ushered in new art and graffiti and certainly ushered in new fashion. So I, it always fascinated me to have this robot come down with no memory and to see what he how he would react to uh, this environment, both the negatives and the positives. And un, and he's going to uncover his origin. Uh, not only that, you know, there's an origin to his connection here to Earth, but ultimately he'll find his purpose. Um, it started off as a movie screenplay. Uh, what I did a couple of years ago, I started a new uh, task where I, I began the new year and, and I would say to myself, let me do something that, I, that I've never done before, that I'm completely green on. And at the end of the year, I'm going to have a metric. And that metric will will show you know how much progress I made in this new goal, right? So one of the first ones I did was I took all my graffiti art that was all in markers, uh, some of it in aerosol, and I'm going to make it into a di digital uh, graffiti, and I'm going to open up an Instagram account. Never did that before. Open up an Instagram account, and through the year, if I have a 1,000 followers at the end of the year, if I meet that metric, well, then you made it, Eddie. You made it. And I did it for the whole year. I never dealt with Instagram, never really dealt with much social media, to be honest with you. And so, it, and it evolved and what an amazing community and so many people. And I broke a thousand even before October, which, uh, which back then was, was a lot easier than it is now in terms oh, of it's algorithm. It's so yeah. hard now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The algorithm Forget game it. is always changing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, so I made it. So now, but during that year, I remember having a story in the back of my head and it was about, at that point, uh, it was Zed story. At that point, it's called ZNK. And I created a little mini comic book because uh, I am I'm not a sequential artist. So I said, let me do a couple panels just to see how it came out. And it's pretty amateurish, but it, it gave me enough inspiration, especially with those writers there that are on the website to go, you know, Eddie, you should do something with this. This is something that is uh, uh, that I really think you should do. So at that point, the, the end of the year happens. OK, what's my new project? I said, you know what? This will really lend well to a movie script. So I don't know nothing about movie script writing, uh, certainly not a writer by trade. Uh, so let me go the old, you know, the new school way, right? So I hit consult YouTube, uh, talk to friends that are in the business, uh, and I also read a lot of books. One of my favorite books is a book called uh, Save the Cat, and it talks about, you know, the three-act play. It talks about story arcs and everything, and it was amazing. Uh, and so with that, I started writing the script, and the goal for that year was to have a movie script in my hand, you know? So going through the year, educating myself, kind of going back and forth with the story, End of the year happens. I have this giant script on me, you know, which which was really a feat. Really was a feat for me. That's you impressive. Know? Honestly, yeah, no, I mean it, to to start it that year and then by year's end, like to see how much progress you made, like that yeah. is wicked impressive. Yeah, that's the goal, you know. Because listen, with everyday life and, and being a dad and certainly oh, yeah. working and providing, you know, uh, it's good to have things for yourself that you know I'll build mm -hmm. you, it makes you a better dad, you know, and it makes you you know a better person. So. So now I have the movie script, and now we got to start the new year, and uh, which was uh, which was uh, beginning of January. I said, and as I'm passing it around, people say this would make a really great comic book, and I agree. I think a lot of the scenes translated well in terms from panel to panel, and I had the whole thing there. But now I have to transfer it into a comic script, which is a completely different beast, you know. Oh yeah. So and not only that, I had to hire some artists because again, I'm not a sequential artist. But I did do the pan. I did panel everything out. And I did actually create a little mini animation of the whole story, all four. And it's about an hour and a half movie because, it, again, it comes from a script. 
And yeah, so that started the journey in January. And at the end of the year, um, you know, I needed to have a comic in my hand, a physical comic that has backers and everything. And that's where this is on the phase that we're on now. You know, Kickstarter and, and uh, it's going great so far and it built an amazing community. Again, uh, the indie comic scene. I, I've never seen a community so so um so caring for lack of a better word uh so put together i mean everyone is just so positive so super supportive um even in my case starting my kickstarter which i know nothing about you know i had a lot of people that are big in the indie scene uh lori calcaterra for example i'm not sure if you know her. oh yeah oh yeah yes and lori helped me create the kickstarter she helped me to kind of categorize everything uh george medina another amazing writer you know he helped me you know kind of warn me what's coming on and you know what 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 I would be facing in, in the whole Kickstarter phase and just in the whole creation phase, you know. But a lot of people kind of came to the fore and, and it's amazing. It's amazing the, the indie comic mm -hmm. community. And, and and it's really impressive because you don't see that in this world. Uh, certainly you don't you don't yeah. see that in this country. You know, it's very divisive, uh sometimes very too competitive. And and I figured it out. I figured it out, Lauren and Matt, why the community is so well held together. And I figured it out after after many months of contemplating and meeting these amazing people. I think what it comes down to is that all of us got a primal need to tell a story. Now, in some cases, it could be a poem. Some cases it could be a lyric. Some cases it could be a graphic novel. Whatever the case may be, I think it's a primal need for us to share a story. And that's the community that I found within the indie scene. Everyone wants to tell a story. And not only that, they want to support you to do it. So that's a beautiful thing. And I certainly right. don't take it for granted. Well, and honestly, that's kind of the foundation of this podcast was we originally started as a beer podcast because craft mm. beer is another one of those industries where people support each other and don't necessarily view their competitors as competition wow. to where they'll be like, oh, hey, I'm short on, you know, hops. Do you have any of citra hops that I can, you know, borrow? And and we've seen that in, and it creates a community. And then when we shifted over to doing more comic book stuff. We, we saw that same thing and we see it definitely in indie creators, but we've even seen it with creators who are at Marvel and DC and, oh, Image, and it's just and recommending cool. each other and like supporting each other and sharing each other's comics. And it's just, it, it's, it's amazing to see like the whole world should yeah. run how, you know, these comic book creators and craft breweries run. I think we'd all, we'd all be in, a, in better shoes. Just let like artists like art, right? Everybody wants to share yeah, art they're both and art. art is one of those things that transcends time. I mean, telling stories, how many you know, t tales, cave paintings, things like that are all telling stories across time. And it's sure. one of those things that like you, everybody loves listening to each other. You take something from each other and you're right. Like, yeah, your all common goal is to share a story that could change somebody's life. I mean, you see it in music, uh, everywhere you go, just art. I, I feel like if artists ran the world, you know, whether they're storytellers or they're actual, you know, art artists, then the world would definitely be a better place because the things that everybody's out here doing is creating beautiful things. Um, and we, we even got to take a look at some of this and there's a really, really beautiful sequence on one of the pages. It's uh, the sign says, welcome to Bronx 1982. And then you have a gentleman, he's sitting there, he's got the headphones. He's like, you know, he's crafting music and it's, you see, you know, our, our robotic friend here, just like transcending almost like he's like rising up and the music's flowing around him. Like, that's such right. a cool sequence. Can you take us through how you assembled your art team, how you got like the colors, how everybody came together and then like what the vision was like for you to them and how it sure. translated? Sure, sure. Thanks, Matt. You, you know, one of the things was is that, you know, as an artist, you know, I, it, I'm very well connected to any project that I work on, you know, and it's very hard to kind of in a sense share <laughs> because it, especially it's something so personal. So it, my day job, I'm more of like an art director, you know, and I've mm -hmm. managed thousands of projects and, and collaborated with many people. But this one was different. You know, I think a lot of it has to do it's with personal. the stories a lot about me. Correct. Correct. Uh, his uh well, it, it really is. Everything that happens with Zed is really what happened to me. The healing process of how music healed my ears, how, you know, graffiti healed, you know, healed my eyes and things like that, you know. So it was a very personal account. So knowing that and knowing that I'm not a sequential artist, I really needed to assemble a team that was very sensitive to that. I wasn't going to just hand over a comic script and then have them finish it. No way. I actually had all the panels drawn out and everything. But I also wanted to be patient because obviously, listen, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're humans here and we should, you know, be... Uh, you know, um, we, we should keep in mind that we're trying to reach the same goal. And thankfully, boy, some amazing stuff came out of it. I, I vetted a couple of artists and I found two uh, that actually were from Brazil. One called Lucas Assis. He's the main, uh, 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 actually, he's the main artist. And then the colorist is called G. Sabina. And it's amazing. You know, it's so I'm so glad I fell upon Brazilian artists because in particular with colors, 
And particularly since, as I told you yeah. before, all four is going to be in, in the middle of a nighttime. I needed a colorist that was very sensitive to that because colors are different at night and light and shining and everything is, is it's going to be very important to the story. So thankfully for me, not only did I find a great team to work with and was, and was patient enough with me, but, uh, but certainly brought their uh, collaboration. They, they brought their talents to the table and what they brought in were things that I never even thought of before. And, and, and it worked out amazing. It really did. Um, so super excited. Yeah. Super excited. The way it came out, certainly as close to my vision as I can in terms of what I originally uh, envisioned. And uh, yes, I'm hoping to work with this team for, for throughout the rest of the episodes. Did, so you mentioned oh, you have on. four issues planned. Do you see it going further if these issues do well? Yes, because it certainly lends to the end. It lends to uh, to some continuation of the story. You know, Ooh, I love that. Yeah, yes, it certainly lends to some continuation of the story. Yeah. Now you know you talked about being an artist yourself and having. Are there things you took away from these guys' art that you now want to use in your everyday artwork? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the collaboration process itself, uh, and particularly angles, I think, is what I took the most from the artists is is different way of interpreting what the panel was. You know, as I told you before, this was like a movie script. So I saw kind of things in cinematic shots Mm -hmm. and some things in comics don't work well in cinematic shots. And he showed me that he showed me in terms of some action sequences of how certain panels can be put together to kind of create what you see with the camera. But also, it can go beyond the camera and and without Mm -hmm. giving too much away of the story is what he helped me to do. So that certainly opened my eyes to it. Yeah. Different way of viewing kind of different scene, you know, I, that it is great getting to see how everybody collaborates. And then like, it's, you're learning from each other at the same time, you guys are creating something yeah. personal to you and you're like, Oh, I can do this. And that really, really helps a lot to getting your vision out there. And now it's also on Kickstarter and you have some really cool things. Like one of the, the cool is that you can get immortalized in the comic book, um, creating a custom full yeah. color graffiti tag with your name. Uh, so how did you come up with the ideas for some of your, your uh, Kickstarter campaign ideas? And what was the challenge for you doing that for your first campaign? Well, first and foremost, people told me to keep it simple. It's my first ever Kickstarter. So, you know, that's the number one advice everyone gave me. Please, you know, just keep it super, super simple. And, and, I, and I believe I did. But also a lot of the, the graffiti community kind of helped me to fill in what the rewards were. Uh, so what I did was for about six months, I reached out to all graffiti writers and anyone that had a tag, I would put it in the comic book. And so the comic book is actually has a lot of people's tags in it, which personalize it, which makes it look authentic. And so now the extension of that was I was going to create the, the highest tier package would be for $250. And what it would be is I'd create a full graphical burner or tag, kind of like the one I have above me. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, four places of real estate within the comic that it fits really well in. So uh, for that price, I'm going to not only put your, you know, kind of immortalize you in the comic, but also you're going to get the comic and everything else that comes with the rewards. And I have one person that's going to do it. I'm just waiting for them to come through. So they said, uh, probably within the last week, you know, they said, don't that's, put the squeeze on him. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. That's awesome. Don't I, put the squeeze on him. It's such a unique <laughs> idea. An oral yeah. contract is binding. There you go. Yes. Exactly. Your word is your bond. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There Coming you go. after you. We'll send the robot after you, but I mean, it's such a cool idea. I mean, graffiti is such a unique sense of art and it's not one that you really see in comic books too often. So I think that's a really unique, fresh idea bring into the, the comic book game. And I know as of right now, when we're recording this, we have 14 days left. Um, and then, you know, from there we got the printing left and everything like that. So I, are there any other stories? So this one wrap up, we got the four, are you kind of already working on like your next one or are you waiting to see how this goes and then you continue this story? Or what, what do you have planned? Well, well, I'm actually working with the artist now to kind of get the next issue kind of started and everything, you know, and we're, we're, we're in the middle now of having just brainstorming sessions. The script is what it is, but in terms of what was successful with this comic, you want to kind of continue that. Mm. And oh, so, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. so we're just kind of right now, you know, level set and everything kind of remembering what worked in the first campaign, but what can we do for the second issue? Uh, as far as other stories, no, it, it's the process. I tell you, Matt, of getting the comic done. I really underestimated it. I really underestimated oh, yeah. it because you're not only from, you know, not only working with the artists and, and trying to, uh, you know, interpret what the scene looks like, but more importantly, the, even the letter, my letter was named is uh, Matthias Zanetti, who was an amazing letter and who was really just brought again talk about another person who brings to the project and really enhanced it it was certainly in his case and i like working with letters early on in the process because their artwork is the aesthetics of their art 
the aesthetic of their words and because I'm very sensitive to letters being a graffiti artist. Right. I think really I, I notice people, they do the panels and they go to the letterer at the end. But I, sometimes I, one of the things that I appreciated was getting him involved right from the beginning because the, the letter is certainly a part of the comic book that some people Absolutely. sleep on, you know, unfortunately. Uh, but it certainly makes for it. He certainly does a great, great job of that. So, yes, uh, that's going to be the main mission. You know, one, one Kickstarter, certainly step one, building the audience, great community. Uh, the second part is to actually reach out. And, and, uh, and I have a really uh, interesting, um, it's actually going to be a very exciting meeting with meeting other people uh, in the Bronx, for example. They just opened up the Hip Hop Museum. And it's going to open oh. up in 2025. So we have meetings set up with them in December. And we might talk sponsorship. We might talk, you know, ways oh, yeah. of kind of reaching oh, to another awesome. scene. So because it certainly it's fits their the, like, the gift shop. Yes, yeah. correct. Correct. And especially him, it, he, it, the, his character is just very... It took me about four months to think of that character design. And mm -hmm. if you notice, he has like a really big head, small body. Oh, yeah. e everything about him is, is, is calculated. Uh, even from the little antenna on his head, because eventually you'll find out that he does have some connection to this earth. He he couldn't come down looking like Voltron or like a transformer, right? Like this massive, yeah, right. I mean, it, it's Correct. almost like humanistic, and he's he's smaller too, and it yes makes it like vulnerability. There's a vulnerability aspect That's to it. him, and mm -hmm. you know, like a little robot, big city almost, and that That's you know correct. we can absolutely. Right. A, a, you know, relate to that. It makes him a re relatable character. I feel yeah. right off the bat, and that's something that I think you capture throughout his artwork or his, his design for sure. Yeah, appreciate it. And and I tell you, I remember when I was first designing it, and again, I went went old, I went new school, and went online to see what well, really makes good character design. You know, and one of the things that that really helped me was they were talking about every every character that stands out, every great character design. If you can see them in a silhouette without any details, and you can notice who they are. You are successful in doing it. So you could That's think true. of Marge Simpson, for example. You could think of Homer Simpson, just a silhouette, yeah. Mickey Mouse. You could Wolverine. Like you know who yeah. they are. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Correct. So the same with uh, same with Zed. Zed had to be. You know, so a lot of thought went into it, but uh, it, the, the hard work certainly was worth it. Well, that's, that's showing love and appreciation and care for what you're doing. You're not just doing it. I mean, nobody gets in the business of comics to, you know, be rich, right? That's um, for sure. If that were the case, you know, we'd all be doing it. But it, it shows you like how much hard work it is and how much love you just, these you and everybody who's doing it pours into there. And that's why I think, you know, also the indie community is in comic book community in general is just so welcoming and such a great space that I'm glad that you found. Um, cause right. honestly, like it can be a place of healing and love and just acceptance. Sure. And that's what I, I think we're getting from this comic. And I can't wait to, you know, read the full thing. I, we do want to know, like, are you going to any, I know we have the Bronx in 2025 for the hip hop right. museum, which right. me, I love, 80s 90s hip-hop like yes. i absolutely love that era it is by far the best era yes. of you know like hip-hop almost music in general period because the cultural implications that it just has like on america and cities and things like sure. that so that's a really cool museum that's opening are you going to be going to any comic cons are you going to be shopping this out anywhere can people find it aside from kickstarter yeah the next step would be uh you know uh pro selling it through my website that's the first one. And I do have a, a publishing digital publishing deal with ASAP Imagination. So they're actually going to help yeah. me carry the digital side of things. Uh, so that's really going to be cool. As far as the printed side, I'll, I'm going to handle that till we see kind of like what goes on with the uh, with, with the IP as the year goes on. And then, of course, mixing in, getting the second issue done at the same time. So uh, I'll be a busy guy. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. But in a good way, in a good way. It's all, it yeah. all pays off in the end. Hard work pays yeah. off in the end, right? You know, at least yep. that's what they tell us anyways. But, but I appreciate, but I appreciate you guys. And certainly, Matt, how you mentioned how art is, you know, even to this day, is still so super effective. It really helps people, you know, it saves people. I, I hate to sound, people might say that I'm over, you know, analyzing it or, no, or, or saying too yeah. much of it. It really does. It saves people. And so, you know, one of the, one of the biggest, and I, I'm not sure if it's Confucius or Buddhist, he mentions that uh, art that is hidden is wasted, you know, art yeah. that is hidden is wasted. Uh, and I think in any kind of art medium, music, art uh, comic books writing whatever it is if you can't share it with other people uh i, I think it, it does become wasted so i'm thankful that i'm in a medium that now i can share it with people and so let's yeah. go Ready it's to supposed rock. to be shared i mean yeah i mean there's so much beauty in the world uh it's easy to sit on doom scroll how we you know talk about social media it's easy sure. to get caught up in what's going on especially in 
the modern age. And so if you just take that step outside, take a walk to your local park, take a walk through your city. Uh, you know, Lauren and I have been, you know, our group, we've kind of been running more. And so I've been using that as a reason to just run through historical areas because I'm in Virginia. Um, okay. So I'm just using that. And it's just like, man, there's so much just beauty out there yeah. and it's calming. And around. you're right. Sure. Sure. And well, Lauren, you're from Florida, in, right? Florida, right? Yeah, I'm in Florida. Think, yeah, yeah, but yeah, it's like you go to New York or you, know, you go to these big cities like Austin and all these places and you turn around and you'll see these like murals on the wall that like represent that city. And you see it all over like downtown Orlando as well or downtown Fort Lauderdale. And I always love those murals with the alligators and like, yeah. you know, all these little things that represent like there's a fantastic one in downtown Orlando of like one of the swans in Lake Eola wearing a Mickey hat and there's an alligator and it's just, it's, it's all fun. And it's really awesome to see the different interpretations. Like one of the coolest things I think we've really gotten to experience having this podcast is meeting so many different creators and seeing so many different styles of storytelling and art. And of course you put yeah. that together and that creates a whole other thing. So sure. it's been a lot of fun and yeah, art's healing, whether you're creating it or viewing it, it's a hundred percent healing and the camaraderie it creates. And I mean, go to a con and like, Tell me you're not feeling something yeah. like oh, yeah. you get the feelings yeah. there. So it's all, it's all amazing. And, and I love it all. And we certainly need it, right? We certainly yes. Need it. Yeah. We, we need it more than ever. <laughs> we need it more than ever. <laughs> but as, as we kind of wrap up here, um, where can people find you, follow you? Um, the Kickstarter is all going to be down here below, but what, where's the social media that people can definitely find you and follow your artwork? Yeah, cer well, certainly Kickstarter, like I mentioned, really appreciate that. A couple of weeks left, you know, hopefully we'll make it. I think we will, especially if we put oh, the yeah. squeeze on that guy that's going to buy the 250 tier. We'll Tell him where he's at. We'll tell, let us know where he's at. We'll, we'll show up at his house. <laughs> exactly. We'll show up with <laughs> yeah. Muscles Malone. Man, Don't right. worry, we got this. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring the heat. We'll bring the heat. My daughter's uh, a scrapper. She can show up. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll bring the heat. Uh, but yes, uh, Instagram, uh, at end of Zed, uh, at is Instagram. My, also my graffiti site, uh, ZNK238. Uh, uh, you can see the whole journey of how I started there. Really, really cool. And then my website, endofz.com, endofz.com. So and it's and I saw you're on TikTok notes. too. Yes, and TikTok. But, you know, yeah, TikTok's a little iffy. And who knows if it will be around, right? <laughs> I mean, none of us no. none of us really know how to crack the code, right? It's just a right. matter of, right. I feel like, luck these days. But, you know, it's a place to share. Nobody follows anymore. Right. It's, we just like to share. As If one person sees it, then you get that one person, in my opinion, it's like yelling out into the void. But if one person happens to hear your voice, then maybe that's one person that catches on and then they tell somebody yeah. and then they tell a friend. And really, that's all it takes. You know, it, you yeah. never know. Um, and that's why we keep doing it. So keep sharing. Everything's going to be in the show notes here for this. Make sure you guys back this project. Um, I know we are going to be. So please go check this out. Follow Eddie here. And Eddie, man, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your evening and uh, getting to hang out with us. No, no, thank you. And Matt and Lauren, grab your kids right after the show. Put them in the living room and say, listen, I want you to know. Someone told me that we are the coolest parents. I'm All right, cool. you can continue your day. Go ahead. You can Tell continue you, that's, that's going to be that's going to be a <laughs> quote. I'm going to have to like hang that up somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to no, hang it up somewhere. seriously. If I had parents like you, I'd be amazing. You know, that's awesome. My oldest has always yeah. been nice to me. It's that middle one, man. Oh, OK. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Have, knowing her. Yes, she is. But she'll come around. <laughs> Trust me. We'll just yes. blast it with the megaphone, but yes. everybody Fingers um, crossed. <laughs> check this out. Make sure to follow us as always for more creator interviews um, and then like subscribe, share and follow. And until next time, we'll see you later. Cheers.